unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language. But the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Somebody speak to God. If you're sick, God is going to heal you of any disease. I mean any disease. I mean any disease. I mean any disease. I see somebody, you came with a pain in your lower abdomen. It's just below here. It's been painful for weeks. God is healing you now. In the name of Jesus. Sole brosikarande. Right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody speak to God. The presence of God is here. The atmosphere is changing. In the name of Jesus. There is somebody on my right about up there. You have been struggling with breathing. Your breathing has not been good. God is healing you right now. In the name of Jesus. The power of God is here.
Chicho, no voy en Sarubo, te voy a cuecar a Mucama, a te la te la piscina, hechiciva,
Father, we praise you. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. We honor you, God. Somebody say we honor you, God. Just honor him. Just praise him for who he is. Forever, son. Somebody thank Jesus. Come on, thank God. Jesus. something about that name. There's something about that name. There's something about that name. Praise God. You got it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's rush through the word quickly. Galatians chapter 6, verses 8. Let's read. One, two, three, let's go. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Read it one more time. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap Zoe everlasting. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when the Bible says that the things that were written are for, are for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the Scriptures we might obtain hope, there are many things that were done, even by the Christ, but were not recorded. Can I say that? There are some things, many things. The Bible says there are many other things which Jesus did. And that which, if it should be written, every one of them, I suppose even the world itself would not what? Could not what? Contain the books that should be written. Praise God. But you see, many people don't ask themselves. <laughs> when the Bible says there are many things which Jesus did, and if we have to write them down, the scriptures tell us, the books 
Even the earth, the world itself, could not contain the books that should be written. The Bible is only a sample. It's only a sample about who Jesus is. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Now, listen. He says, give the Amplified, Amplified. And there are also many other things which Jesus did. If they should all, the Bible says, be recorded one by one in detail. He said, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain or have room for the books that would be written. I said, the Bible is too small about who Jesus is. Are you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says, there are things Jesus did that no books could contain. And John writing knows those things. You understand? He knows those things. Don't think he's, he's just imaginatively supposing that perhaps maybe. He could have said, they could be. No, he said, there are many things which Jesus did. You understand? Now, when John is writing, he's, he has to pick a few things from these, these things. Let me tell you, Jesus is bigger than even the Bible. <laughs> I don't know that you understand what I mean. Jesus is even bigger than the script, these things we read. This is just a few pages about the man. I don't know that you understand. Now, the Bible says that the things that were afore written. Now, we're saying, okay, now look, let us get a sample of these things. Out of the many things that this guy did, let us get just a sample, a small sample of these things, of what this guy did. Yeah? And since there were several things were written aforetime. time, were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That means... See, the reason why we don't even see God is because we don't understand the dimensions by which He teaches men. You understand? See, God is not subject to the way we think He ought to teach. Or from the way we think men ought to learn. You understand? And sometimes I've seen that delusion around the camp. And that is why Paul says, let us go without the camp and bear the reproach of Christ. Because there is a camp which thinks that Jesus has to be predictable and fitting in their box the way they think he should. If he doesn't do it a certain way, then he's not God. That's why you find disciples, the Bible tells you that they found a man casting out devils in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says and we forbid him because he followeth not us. That's what Mark said. He followeth not us. And Jesus, what's the next verse? The next verse says, 39. And Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. You understand? In other words, I know he doesn't follow you guys and you don't see him in your group. But I don't think that I'm limited to speaking to 5,000 and you think that's how far I can teach See, there are many ways Jesus speaks to men. We only think he has to speak to us a certain way. In fact, many people, Christ speaks to them so deeply, but they have not a clue that is actually Christ speaking. You understand? That's why it's for this reason he says, I have revealed myself unto you, so that you will be a minister and a witness of those things which I have shown unto you. And he says, and in those things in which I will appear. In those things in which I will appear. You know, as I might not appear like this vision you had about Jesus with long hair. You understand? But there are things in which I will appear. Don't limit God by the way he teaches men. Now here is the challenge. I saw that disciple was going to ask Jesus Christ, how did this one learn? Because all of us, we understood how we learned. I mean, we were with you. You spoke to 5,000 people. You fed us. We walked with you. The Bible says when you are alone with us, you expanded the scriptures. We understood the parables. When you explained to us, you healed the sick. We watched you healing the sick. We watched you raising the dead. We watched you open blind eyes and opening deaf ears. We saw you with our very own eyes. How did you teach a man who was not with us? How did you reveal yourself to a man who was not with us? The Bible says by faith, Moses... The Bible says, he, when he was full of age, he refused to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh. The Bible says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Listen, esteeming the reproach of Christ, the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. Now when the Bible says, esteeming the riches, esteeming the riches, esteeming the greater riches, 
You understand? It means Jesus appeared to Moses. But not in the fashion and way men explain or think he ought to appear. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. So Moses refuses to be called the son of the daughter of Pharaoh because when he saw Christ, when he saw Christ, he started to respect the recompense of the reward. He had he started to have a certain honor of the reward that should come with that. And he, the Bible says he counted the household of Pharaoh lost. Let me tell you, eh? men just don't leave comfort zones. Can I say it again? Men just don't leave comfort zones. Unless a man has not seen Jesus. But if a man has seen Jesus, <laughs> he will let go of anything you hold dear. Those things you think that are important. Listen, men will let go of anything. You see, if you see a man who is not ready to lay down their lives, they have not really seen Christ. If you see Christians you're still dealing with, oh, please pray, come on, let's go for missions, let's, let's do this, please, come on. You see, they've not yet seen Jesus. When you see Jesus, the day your eyes see the Son of God, everything else grows strangely dim. Everything starts to lose sense. You understand? And you see, the challenge with many Christians today that we're dealing with, many people have not seen the Christ. He has not been revealed. They love Him, yes. But they've not seen him. They've not seen him. They've not interacted with Jesus. You can't see God and be the same. You cannot see God and be the same. You can't. You see, that day I was told a story of a guy. They told me he backslid. He was a wonderful minister. He healed the sick. He did various miracles. And they told me, uh, this guy woke up in the morning and then he walked out of salvation and said, oh, I'm not born again anymore. And he went to Roman Catholicism. I said, no, that guy hasn't seen Jesus. But, oh, but he did miracles. You don't understand. You can't see Jesus and walk away. You can't. I mean, a man has refused to be called a son of the daughter of Pharaoh. He has left the pleasures of, 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 of Egypt, the splendor and glory. The wealth and everything that is attached to glory. And he chooses to go to another place because he has seen the Christ. How can you tell me that the other one saw Christ? It's impossible. You can't see Christ and walk away. You can't. But I saw Jesus. No, that's not the one you saw. I said, that's not the one you saw. Praise God. The real one you can't. Somebody say amen. amen. So now here is the testation of the minister. The place where the man seeks to approve himself before men which cannot understand him. Not because he is wrong, but because they are indifferent to how God reveals himself to men. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. This guy was not among the twelve. He didn't break bread with them. He didn't first sit to learn. He was somewhere in his closet with his God and God started to deal with him. Personally. Differently from the 5,000. Look at Cornelius. The Bible says that he was a devout what? Man. And he fasted and prayed. He gave much alms to the poor. He was not a Jew. He was an Italian. You understand? But God, the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared to this fellow. Let me tell you, I tell people always, there is always a place for men who are hungry. It's there. It's there. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So now, when we look at the man who is casting out devils, and he was not shown the five steps of of rebuking devils, or seven ways to know the spirits have left, or thirteen ways to identify which demon is tormenting an individual, or two ways to know whether you can rebuke or not, or... Three easy steps to demon chasing. He, he didn't have those books. You understand? But God taught him. God taught him. And that's when I realized that take heed of men who are taught outside the camp. Take heed of them. Paul says that, you see, when, when this Jesus Christ made up his mind to be revealed to Paul, He says, no man told him this thing. He says, no man told me this gospel. You realize he was in Damascus, moving around, preaching Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. The moment Jesus wants to take him to a depth of events, 
He separates him into an experience of Arabia. You understand? And while he's in Arabia, he's not in Bible school. No, 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 no. You see, I'm not saying there's no place for Bible school. But I'm saying I've seen men who have come from Bible school and they still don't know Jesus. Because there's something about God and the way he wants to deal and teach you. It's deeper than any camp. It's deeper than any camp. And this is what I've seen. Because of the fulfillment of prophecy, then the last day's knowledge shall increase. And the knowledge of God shall fill the earth. You understand? I have come to the understanding that as knowledge continues to be distributed, God is going to start and have started teaching men ways we can never understand. The one thing I know that men will start speaking and we're going to ask ourselves, where did this one go to school? And we're not going to be able to explain. People will start asking you, how did you get it? Where did you dig it from? And honestly, you won't be able to explain it. Why? Because the way God teaches is too diverse to be limited to how we think he should teach. Even the battles we're seeing in the Christian faith today is because certain men think you have to be taught their way. If you're not taught their way, then God didn't teach you. If you didn't go to their Bible school, you're not taught of Jesus Christ. If you don't go to their church, if you didn't go through their umbrella, the Holy Spirit hasn't sat on you. You're functioning under another spirit until you fit in their camp. Now wait and see how God is going to raise men who don't fit in camps. But boy, they know Jesus. They know Jesus. And any man who walks out of the camp must suffer reproach. And that reproach is not because you're a bad man, no. That reproach is because you're becoming unpredictable in the knowledge of Christ. There is always reproach for men which walk out of the camp. You understand? Why? Because they become unpredictable. You see, there is nothing that disturbs the Christian faith today, like Christianity and its predictability. Many Christians are predictable. You look at how they are going to get married. You look at which schools they go to, which jobs they go to, which cars they drive, which houses they live in, how they speak, the way they relate, and you can see they are like the world. You understand? But begin from where we began from in the Christian faith. He says, you receive not the spirit of this world, but you have received the spirit which is of God, that you might know the things which are freely, freely given unto you. The beginning of salvation is every day waking up to see freedom. That's the beginning of salvation. He says the things which are freely given unto us by God. That means every time I read in the word, I see the freedom of the spirit. 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 And therein is the judgments of the spirit. He says, for we shall be judged by the very law that sets us free. The judgments of God are based on free men. Listen, God judges less on men which don't know. He says in the days of ignorance, God winked. He didn't judge. But now he calleth all men to change their mind, to repent. Because the line of repentance and embracing this spirit, which is of God, means that now you carry a responsibility because you have the freedom to access. That is deeper. The Bible says, and everything that should be known of God has been revealed to them. You understand? Even the Godhead... Look at where the Christian begins from. He says, because that which is known, because that which may be known of God, what what should be known of God? The Bible says, is manifest in them. Everything that should be known, what is God? What does He do? The Bible says, it is manifest. It is manifest. It is manifest. Oh, but I don't see it work. Yes, it doesn't change the scriptures. The scriptures don't break. They still carry the reality that everything which may be known of God, what do you know about God? The Bible says it is manifest in them. For God, what? Has showed it unto them. Look at the pattern. What he reveals, he manifests. What he reveals, he manifests. What he reveals. For God has revealed it unto them. So the reason why we don't carry a manifestation of the depth of the Spirit is because we are wanting in the Spirit of Revelation. And to the depth of the Spirit of Revelation, whose end is that everything that is known of God ought to be manifest in you. That men walk as gods on the earth. That when they want to see God, they see you. If you ask them, where is God? You say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Oh no, no, no. L- listen, some Christians say, no, 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 no. We're not too holy. Jesus is holy. God is holy. For us, we're this way. We're sinners. You understand? So how many Christians want to live? Ah, me. You see, that's false humility. Don't put yourself in a place where God has not put you. Remember Jesus praying? He said, I pray that they may be where I am. Where am I? This is him praying in John 17. 
He says, I pray. My desire, it was Jesus' desire to the Father. Did God answer his prayer? Did God answer his prayer? He says, that for I desire that they also, whom you have entrusted unto me as your gift to me, may be with me where I am. Where am I? Am I in sorrow? Am I in trouble? Am I in sickness? Am I in poverty? Am I distraught? Am I disadvantaged? Am I disgruntled? Am I devastated? Am I stressed? Am I depressed? No. He says, I pray that they may be where I am. The realm where I function. That is my desire. That indeed the scriptures might come true. That you are hid in Christ. Jesus. You are seated in Christ. In. 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 In Christ. The Bible says, far above all principalities and powers. It is possible. Tell your neighbor it is possible. That is why when a man understands the ministration of faith, you start to firstly know where Christ is. For this is love made perfect that we might have confidence on that day. For as he was, as he was, no, the Bible says as he is, so are we in this world. How is he? How is he? How is Christ right now? Listen, imagine a doctor went to Jesus and told him you have cancer. What would Jesus do? Because as he is, so are you. Are you hearing me? As he is, so are you. You say no. You say no. Soon you're going to see a video. They brought me a little girl. She was about 15. And she was dying of leukemia. I don't even know where the brother came to. And they brought the kid in the office. Just this last week. And then, look at me. Eh? Doctors. Oh, la, la, la. you know how cancer is exaggerated. You understand? And then I looked at this girl and I told her, Do you even believe Jesus exists? And she says, yeah, I believe in Jesus. I believe he exists. And I told her, Do you know what is inside you? And she said, She looked at me with this eye of, Okay, maybe let me try to explain. We have the life which is of God. You understand? We have the life which is of God. Do you know what that means? The very life that is inside Jesus Christ is inside your bones. Are you hearing me? The Bible says we are members of His body, His flesh, and His blood. We are members. I don't know whether you understand what I mean. We are members of his body, his flesh and his bones. His flesh, your members of his flesh. You understand? So when they say you have HIV, Jesus has HIV. Come on, somebody. He says we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. What? Listen. What would it be like? For Jesus to have a bone, you are a member. You are a part of it. What would it be for Jesus to have flesh? Listen, the Bible says we regard no man after the flesh, even the Christ. But the Bible says we are members of his flesh. So if we regard no man after the flesh, and yet we are members of his flesh, it can only mean... Tell your neighbor, I can't die young. Tell him. Tell him, I can't die disease. Tell him. I'm not going to die disease. Tell your neighbor, I cannot die disease. Disease is not my body. It's not part of my body. It's not my portion. I refuse to die like that. You'll die at 90. You'll wake up in the morning at 100. Thank you. It's your choice. Then when you're out about 98 or 99, you tell your little children, come and I tell you what shall befall you. Full of life. My mother is my witness. My grandpa died 105. Her father. He woke up in the morning. Told guys, you guys, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> that is how we have to live. I refuse to. Oh, no. Listen, the heavens have heard. Future accidents have had in the name of Jesus. Yes, members of his body. So I started to explain to her like a physician. I told her, now I'm going to put my hand on your chest. 
and the life of God is going to come out of my spirit and it's going to walk through your body. And walking in your body is going to start to kill every cancerous cell and every cell is going to die immediately and you're going to get up healed and tomorrow you're going to go to the doctor and check. I laid hands on her the next day. The brother, he couldn't breathe. She's healed. She's healed. The doctors can't find any cancer. The doctors can't find any cancer. The doctors can't find any cancer. With God, all things are. Tell your neighbor, it's working in my spirit. It is working in my bones. In the name of Jesus. It is working inside me. The life of Christ. That is what the spirit does. See, that is liberty. Free to heal the sick. Free to cast out devils. Free to give a godly life. Free. For who saw the sun sets free. It's free. Many a time it's not the sun setting, it's men setting. That is why we don't have freedom. When God sets a man free, he sets them free indeed. I might even explain something a bit crazy. Do you want me to go there? Yeah. You ask for it. Listen. You ask for it. I have realized that when a man embraces the liberty of the spirit, the circumference of his influence goes beyond the borders of his physical body. The liberties of the spirit. Because you see, your physical body is a limitation. Your physical body is a limitation. Colossians 2. Let's read something there. Colossians 2. Let's begin from verse 1. Let me show you something. He says, For I would that you knew what great conflicts I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. He's not disqualifying the possibility that some might have seen him in the spirit. Okay, you'll understand. Next verse. That their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and to all riches of the full assurance of the understanding, to the acknowledgement, the epignosis of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. And he says, in whom, that Christ, I hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And he says, and this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. And he says, for though I be absent, listen, for though I be absent in the flesh, I am with you in the spirit. I'm not limited by my physical body. I'm free. You see, I don't understand it. Sorcerers walk out of their body and Christians know it's okay. Listen, that's the devil copying our line. That's the devil copying us. We're supposed to be ahead. You see, it's okay for a sorcerer to come out of their body. To have an out of the body experience. But for Christians, it's wrong. When they do it, they say it's wrong. It's not supposed to be wrong. No, listen. This is the devil trying to do what you are. I'm not limited by my body. I cannot be. I should not be. What is he saying? You see, that's the problem with you. The problem is not me. The problem is you. Look, he says, I am absent in the flesh. I'm not there physically. He's in prison. He says, yet I'm with you in the spirit. And he says, joining and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. This is him. He says, joining and beholding. I'm joining with you. That means that when they feel happy, Paul in the spirit knows they're happy. And then he starts to dance. I think he's in prison. And then he sees them praising on, on Sunday morning. And then he starts to dance. And I think, wow, what is this guy looking to? But he has seen that it's Sunday, service time. <laughs> to the intent that a man can even carry out an operation out of his body. First Corinthians chapter 5. Give me verse 1. Let's read the story here. Let's read. He says, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication is as not much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. You see, somebody did it. You know? And Paul was shocked. 
Next verse. And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. They celebrated sin. He says, for I verily, as absent, read this, read this, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, I have judged already. Now, you might say, wait, maybe, just maybe, he has judged in his body. Let's continue. As though I were present. Okay, that's understandable. Concerning him that has done this deed. Next verse. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you guys, where I'm not, are gathered together, comma, and my spirit. <laughs> when, you see, Paul knows that there's going to be a meeting. He says, when you are gathered, comma, and my spirit. He says, with the power of the Lord Jesus. He says, to deliver such an one to such an. He says, in the next meeting I will attend. How can you have that glory and not know what men are discussing about you? How can you have that anointing and not know what men are talking behind your back? How can you flow in that glory and fail in an interview? Before you get the job, you attend the first person they are interviewing. You listen to every question. Tell your neighbor we're going somewhere. Tell him I said we're going somewhere. Now I understand why Elisha was the army of Israel. The Bible says that when the king says, the Syrian king says, we're going north, Elisha comes and tells the king, we're going north. When they go south, he comes to the king and tells them, no, these guys are going south. And he says, ah, every time we go to these Israelites, we fail to kill them. They stand up and say, no. The cabal tells him, boss, the problem is not Israel. They are weak and army. The problem, there is a guy called Apostle Grace. Put your name. <laughs> he said, the problem is a guy called Elisha. He hears even the, the secrets that you discuss in your heart in the bedchamber. When you're in bed and then you think something, Elisha is there. Listen, if this thing enters your spirit, they will not attack the United States of America. Terrorists know. You know where they are attacking. Tell, come on. That's why they should not attack us anymore. If Al Shabab thinks they are going to come north, a man should have seen it. A man should have seen it. I was, I was at home praying, and then in a meeting I sat in a group of sheikhs. There were about eight. And I, I saw these guys discussing. They discussed about three major issues. I remember one, uh, the issue of the bombings. I remember the issue of, um, of, um, of education. How they wanted to recruit eight, nine-year-olds, eleven-year-olds, and then from poor families, and then they take them and then they educate them, and then initiate them in Sharia law and all these other things. I even remember I said that thing, and then a few weeks later the newspapers started to... You remember that time? When, when Egypt came and then got a group of young boys which were 8, 11, and 9, and then took them to look after them and give them education because they came from poor families. You understand? It was published in the newspapers. Just a bit earlier. Now, me, my pain was this. That at that point, we didn't have a voice for anybody to hear. They couldn't listen to us. They couldn't listen to us. They could not listen to us. We spoke about France. You have seen what happened. No, it's, it's not just, oh, I dreamt. No, you have to understand that you're not limited to these things. And you don't need to be a prophet. No, you just need to understand that you're a child of God. You have to get access into these things. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Give me the understanding and the grace to access the things of the Spirit that will protect my land, that will put protection on my family, that will preserve us in Jesus' mighty name. It's supposed to be so. They cannot blow you. Listen, by the time somebody plans to shoot you, now they are going to shoot this way. You take another direction. Children of God are not supposed to be caught offside. It's not our portion. It's not our portion. It's not our portion. It's not our portion. That's the essence of the Holy Spirit. 
that you will be flooded with God himself. Full of God. Listen, you can't... Listen, I refuse that anything should happen without your knowledge. I refuse it. It should not be your story. It should not be your story. It shouldn't be your story. It should not be your story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me read for your story. I received on, 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 on email yesterday, I think. Somebody sent this from, uh, from Mauritius. How many of you know what Mauritius is? Yeah, I know you don't know. <laughs> listen to this email. Listen to this guy. The guy says, listen to this. He says, hi, hello, I am Peter. I was involved in CGO magic which is a high level of dark magic where one has a lot of power in the demonic world. This boy is 25 years in Mauritius. I could vampirize people, which means sucking energy out of them, not physically, but spiritually. I used to feed on people's energy. I knew how to cast spells because I was taught how to do this sigil magic. On one occasion, I lost my phone and I cast a sigil on my door and I got my phone back in a week. The devil knew that I'm different. That is why he wanted to use me. I also had many out-of-the-body experiences and many visitations by darkness. 25 years old. One evening, I wanted to talk to a friend called Thomas. And he was by the poolside on his laptop. And on his screen, he was watching... What I learned later was a funeral video. Listen. When I watched the video by Apostle Grace, he says, I immediately... You, Thomas later told me the video. There was a time I was demonstrating the spirit and I released that anointing on, on, uh, on ashes. You remember that time? He says, when I watched the video, I immediately felt a surge of electricity that I identified and it was warm, it was loving, like the love of God. I could tell that... He is a man of the light. Now listen to how they identify us. Listen to how they identify us. No, you listen to how they in darkness identify me and you. We are men of the light. Listen. Listen. He said, I felt like freedom. It is here. I wish somebody can read it also with me. I felt like freedom. I knew that he was a man of God and I knew I was delivered. He says, there are people who perform miracles, but I don't feel the same energy around them. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not boasting here. Don't get me wrong. I'm just testifying here. Who, not only I am and you are. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Now, he said, I know I was delivered. There are people who perform miracles, but I don't feel the same energy around them. When doing sigil magic, I could sense darkness. I know how it feels when your own body is weighing down. The combination of that heart and hate and suffering at the same time. When darkness visits and that feeling of, 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 of like you are about to die. And he says, but there is a difference with light. I mean, he's now drawing the difference. You understand? There's a difference with light. The light is very different. I felt alive. It is totally different. I can clearly tell the difference. He gave his life to Christ. That, in, you see, immediately, immediately, the surge went through him. That young man gave his life to Christ and walked out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. I was not there. Physically. <laughs> I was not there in the body. What I'm talking about is, when the Bible says God anoints your countenance. You see, there's a place even, some of you, men will look at you and they'll be healed. In the name of Jesus. Men will look at your photo on Facebook And disease will leave them. Because this is love made perfect. For as he is, so are we in this world. 
How be it that this knowledge is not in all men? For some with a conscience of the idol, up to today the Bible says, eat as unto the idol, and their conscience being weak, they are defiled. Some people still think the devil has power over them. They are still conscious of what idols are in this world. The Bible says, for we know that idols are nothing in this world. One time we were in Hong Kong and, and, and I had meetings that a few days later and I was bored and then I talked to one of the pastors and told him, why don't we go on the streets preaching? You know me, I can go anywhere. You know, I don't, I don't need bodyguards and special men of God. To... No, I don't do it like that. Anywhere there is a need for the gospel. So I went street preaching and there was this pastor where we and then we got to a place behind, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an area they call Yamate. Behind it, there is a market and it has more than 500 sorcerers. They're there. I mean, witch doctors and all kinds of things. Warlocks, they're reading palms, tarot cards. It's just like 400 of them. They have different small houses. You enter in there. And then they prophesy, they do stuff. And literally the place was full of darkness. And then we entered. So... We, we passed about three boots, okay? And then about the fourth, there was a woman seated in there. And then she looked at me. And she says, light. Light. <laughs> light. <laughs> light. <laughs> she said, light. Light. The Bible says, and the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness has shined out of us. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus is shining in me. God is shining in me. I'm the light of the world. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm shining. The Bible says the path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Listen, saints. It only took a video to translate a man from darkness. The deepest kind of magic to light. Only a video of a man of light. And that light could come out. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You are more than you think. I said you are more than you think. When you walk those streets, brother, they know who you are. They know who you are. They know who you are. You have to know who you are too. I can imagine you're walking around and men are seeing lights. And that is why I feared. When he said there are men which do miracles but he doesn't feel. I said why? Why? Listen, why wouldn't you feel that energy? I refuse to be that way. I have to be in a place where men feel that there's something inside me. There's something inside me. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I've chosen that way. And that is the pattern I've chosen. That's how I want to live in this life. Praise God. Somebody praise God. Amen. Now. Position yourselves. Prepare your spirits. Because we are moving into a time. Where men are going to stop predicting us. Which doctors are going to come on their knees when they meet you? I told people, it had to take too much power to convert Simon the sorcerer. The Bible says they called him the great power of God. He was not just a sorcerer, no. The Bible says he bewitched the people with many words. So sorry. And the Bible says, they, this man, they say, this man is the great power. And they put capital G of God. But even to the depth of power that was working in him, he found another league of gentlemen. <laughs> he found another kind of power. He found another kind of power. Now I imagine, if he's called the great power of God, and then he finds it, I don't know what those... <laughs> That is why now the saying comes true. That when they saw the doing and the spirit that was working the apostle, they say the gods have come in the likeness of men. They couldn't say the men have come in the likeness of God. No, no, no. They say the gods have come in the likeness of men. It had to be gods looking like men. It couldn't be men looking like gods. 
God, listen, the Bible says, and when the people saw what Paul had done, they lifted up their voices, saying in the speech of Laconia or Laconia or whatever you want to call it. He says, the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. They, when they saw what Paul was doing, they could not think men are like gods. No. They, they could only think gods have come like men. That is where you are. Tell anybody that's where you are. That is where you are. That which is born of God, the Bible says, overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. I'm above disease. I'm above sickness. I'm above poverty. I'm above lack. I'm above disadvantage. I'm above. I'm above. I'm above. I'm above. The Bible says, and Jerusalem, which is above, is free and is the mother of us all. That's where we are. And that is why, don't get me wrong if I say that you're about to shock everyone around you. Don't get me wrong if I tell you so. Men are going to stop predicting you. I've seen days when men are walking on the streets and demons are screaming out of men. I've seen men when they're walking out of streets, just on the streets, and tumors are falling off the sick. I've seen men visit hospitals and blind eyes are opening and men on, 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 on oxygen are getting off. They're being discharged the next day. Why? Because the life of God which is in you walked out of your body and started to have effect. And see, that's how I pray. That's why I have results. You know how I pray? I say, God, I thank you for the life which is in me. It is in my bones. It is in my body. It's even in my clothes. I say those things. One time I visited a friend in Luzida. And there was a little girl she was helping, like a sister to the wife. And then they washed, I, was, I visited there for about three days to pray with the family. And they washed my clothes. And then they gave this little girl a shirt, my shirt to iron it. And the moment she got my shirt and then she put an iron like this on it. The power of God hit this girl about four feet away. And the demon started speaking on her. That is Apostle Grace's shirt. We can't iron it. That is Apostle Grace's shirt. We cannot iron it. We cannot iron it. We cannot iron it. In fact, I remember, I entered the room and the girl became blind for nine hours because she was too infested with demons. We prayed her back. We prayed her back. We prayed about and that's when I realized oh what peace we often forfeit what needless pain we bear how can you be sick how can you be beggarly how can you be disadvantaged when the son of God himself is inside you this is how I know that you guys are going to shake Uganda that's how I know the world is in trouble because God now is revealing these things to us. No, this won't be on one man. No, this will be on many of like kind. Hallelujah. And the anointing is available. The anointing is available. I see people. The Lord literally is anointing your countenance. Holy Spirit. I said, I see people. The Lord is literally anointing your countenance. Your eyes will shine with the glory of God. Even your photos will heal the sick. The Bible says, can a man have fire in his bones and his clothes not burn? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody speak in other tongues. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. When his spirit takes 
over your soul. Speak in other tongues. When His Spirit takes over your soul, you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when His Spirit takes over your soul. Listen. Just receive. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God is anointing your countenance. Everything about you is going to start to carry a power and a glory like men have never seen. The Prince of God is here. Listen, don't limit God by your knowledge. Don't limit God by your knowledge. His power is present. His power is present. Speak to Him. His glory be revealed when His power takes over your soul. When His glory takes over your soul, speak to Him. When His glory. His word takes over your soul. When His word takes over your soul, you will be changed. Receive it. His glory will be revealed. I mean, miracles, signs, and wonders are going to follow you. They 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 are going to follow you. You're entering another place. Put up your hands. You're entering another place in the name of Jesus. They are going to follow you. They are going to.
to follow you. Follow you like signs, miracles, and wonders. They are going to follow you. They are going to follow you. The Bible says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You cast out devils. You trample on snakes and scorpions. And none of those things shall in any means harm you. God will use you to change the world. He will use your identity. He will use your story. He will use your countenance. He will use your gifts. He will use everything with you. And change the world. Come on, let's carry a little longer. Let's just carry a little longer. Speak to God. Tell Him it's time to use me, God. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Receive it. <laughs> change me, change me, Lord, by your spirit, change me. Yes, it is God. experience and say God I want the real thing I I want power I want something tangible I want something men can see I don't want to be political in the things of the spirit I don't want to explain myself when you can vindicate me by your spirit I need something real something men can feel and nobody need you dwell in me Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Prophet of God. I release you to prophecy. I release you to prophecy. Help that lady. I release you to prophecy. Teacher of God. I release you. Oh, help her, help her. Teacher of God, I release.
brings you to peace. And Jesus will appear in your meetings. Signs, miracles, and wonders will appear as you teach. There are seven people in this room. Your preachers. And God says, as you preach, as you preach, as you preach, as you preach. you preach don't worry God does those things I see about 13 apostolic mantles and I see God is literally getting you from one place to another he says I take you higher I take you higher I take you higher I take you higher. I take you higher. I take you higher. I hear the voice. He says, I take you higher. I take you higher. I take you higher. Receive it right now. In the name of Jesus. You're going to raise the dead. Save the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God says you will leave. Woman in black, God says you will leave. You will leave. You will leave. You will leave. He says you will leave. Don't be afraid. You will leave. You will not die. He says you will leave. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That spirit of death right now is cast. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody with a hearing problem. Your ear is sick on your right. Put in your hand like this, your finger like this. God is healing you right now. Somebody, there's a pain in your ear. It's been almost like partially blocked. Somebody with a, in a hearing problem. Put your hand in the ear. God is healing you right now. That pain leaves you right now. Check your ear. If it is hearing, I want you to clap your hands and I hear you clap. If it's healed, I want you to clap your hand wherever you are. I feel God is healing somebody with a hearing issue. Clap your hand if you're healed. He has healed you. <laughs> Look at what the power is doing. <laughs> Look at what the power of God is doing to her. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. And so is your business. In the name of Jesus. So is your marriage. In the name of Jesus. So is your family. In the name of Jesus. So is your personal ministry. In the name of Jesus. So are your relationships. In the name of Jesus, save the Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, and you say, I've not been believing in this God, but I want to receive Him this day, straighten up your hand. I need to pray with you. I need to pray with you. Hey, somebody, praise God. Straight up your hand and say, I need to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Where are you? Where are you? Yes, I see another hand there. And I see another one again. Just put up your hands wherever you are. God bless you. God bless you. Now, if you've raised that hand, I want you to repeat this word after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you died and rose again. That you're not only Savior, but you're Lord of my life. Today I'm born again. Amen. I'm sorry, I hardly do this, but I'm going to do this. There's somebody here. You feel you, had, you were backslidden. You feel like you had walked out of God for so long. And today you feel like you want to 
get back in line. Put up your hand. I want to pray with you. Just put it up. 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 Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says you shall heal all our backslidedness. I decree and I declare that these ones are delivered today. I decree and I declare that they are coming back stronger, mightier, hungrier for the things of the Spirit. That you're going to use them. For indeed it is eternal life to know you the one true God and his only son Jesus. I commit them to you and the word of your grace which is able to keep them and give them an inheritance among us that are sanctified in Jesus mighty name. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information contact us on telephone number 041-466- 4291 or email us at Kampala at gmail.com You can also find us on the web at www.funero.org Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5pm to 8pm You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero Fenero, make manifest